Hi guys, we're back with sessions 36 diagnostic test part 2 of 3 and today the topic is swallowing evaluation in the stroke patient, dysphagia, aspiration, pneumonia, 12 lead EKG, inferior wall myocardial infarction and EKG changes. Let's get started. Now first of all we want to talk about the stroke patient the swallowing evaluation. We do know that after patients have had brain injuries, including the stroke, they might have problems with some of their cranial lobes, like the ninth and 10th, the glossopharyngeal and the vagal, resulting in difficulty swallowing and gagging, which when food goes down the wrong way, they wouldn't even know because they have no ability to gag like the normal person does. Typically, the doctor orders uh, speech evaluation, uh, speech therapy, to do what is called a swallowing evaluation. Now the term for difficulty swallowing is dysphagia and these patients are also at risk for something of aspiration pneumonia. So after a sw swallowing evaluation is done, it can be established whether this patient will have difficulty swallowing regular fluids and sometimes what is ordered for them is a diet that's slightly thicker to make swallowing a bit easier. There is another type of study that's also done called a video fluoroscopic swallow study and I'm not really going to go too into that right now. So let's talk a little more about aspiration pneumonia. The patient who has asp is at risk for aspiration pneumonia is any patient who's having tube feeding or for any, any reason difficulty with swallowing, dysphagia. And some of the considerations are on the care plan is the potential for aspiration pneumonia, maintaining a patent airway, follow your MD orders, keep head of bed up and educate the family not to lower the head of bed because it has been known to happen. And also one of the things you should do is uh, keep your head of bed up and if you have to turn that patient when you stop the tube feeding and lower the head of bed, always make sure that you still pay attention because if the tube feeding if the tube is past the stomach in the jejunum, fine, but if it's in the stomach, you might get uh, aspiration, so you have to be extra careful. Anyway, just follow your instructions, pay close attention, and of course, they always ask you to check for residuals. Now, let's talk about the 12-lead EKG. We know that patients have myocardial infarctions. The layman's term is a heart attack. And there are many tests, diagnostic tests that are done. One of the most important ones is probably the EKG. There are other ones like uh, blood tests like the troponin and the CK and cardiac markers. And with, we are going to focus today on the lead EKG. Leads are placed. You know that the machine set up. Leads are placed. Some of them go around the heart. Some of them are the limbs. But the whole purpose is to see where the damage is to the heart. And so it's like taking a picture with a camera really is what you're doing when you take, I'm sorry I went back a little bit, it's like when you take a camera and you take a picture is virtually what you're doing with an EKG. Now with a myocardial infarction, let's consider the case of this patient who's having an inferior wall MI. Well, he has been complaining of severe heartburn. His nurse has given him medication and two hours later he still has had no improvement. Well, now we're looking at a different picture. This patient might be experiencing a myocardial infarction. Why? Because if you look at the location of the heart, the inferior wall of the heart lies on the diaphragm. So anything in that area might be related to heartburn, but not necessarily be heartburn. So if you have a patient who's had heartburn that's not going away despite being treated, consider that it might be a myocardial infarction. My suggestion is, you uh, do a full assessment, document it, notify the doctor so he can engage you in what you do next. Now, where would you look for an inferior wall MI? Where would a like, virtual snapshot on a camera? You would look for the changes in leads 2, 3, and AVF. Here are some other things I can let you know. That Let's take, let's say you were looking at an EKG and, um, sorry, one second. You were looking at an EKG. Uh, the QRS, the QRS is deepened. It is a sign of an old myocardial infarction. And you may also have an inverted T wave. That is a sign of myocardial ischemia. 
ischemia means decreased blood supply. It does not necessarily mean death. So there is hope for that muscle, you know, being rejuvenated, unlike the patient who's had a myocardial infarction, which spells death of the heart muscle. So I hope you have learned something from this. And, of course, you stay posted very soon for uh, the third one. Have a great week. And I hope you enjoyed learning.